Hi there, uh, my name is Dr. Jamie Mitchell. I'm an endocrine surgeon and the medical director at the Norman Parathyroid Center uh, here in Tampa, Florida. And uh, I'm the director of the Parathyroid Division at the Hospital for Endocrine Surgery, um, where we do all of our operations. Uh, I'm gonna uh, review a, an interesting reoperative parathyroid surgery case with you today. I began doing this uh, a little while ago in the hopes that Patients out there who find themselves uh, having had an unsuccessful parathyroid operation could um, could see or be aware that there are options for them. A lot of times uh, I've learned that once patients have an unsuccessful surgery, um, they often are left without any real plan or options. And so I started to do these in the hopes that um, people might see them and see that they uh, see a patient that had a similar situation to theirs and that there's some options for you and almost almost certainly we can get you fixed from your parathyroid disease. So I'll start with our case here. This is a uh, very nice 64 year old woman from Oklahoma. She was diagnosed with classic primary hyperparathyroidism in 2022, um, halfway through the year or so with classic labs. Her calcium levels were above 11 with elevated parathyroid hormone levels. So a pretty classic case. Uh, she was referred to a surgeon locally, and she underwent an operation uh, in October of that year. During this operation, um, the surgeon began on the right side and uh, stated that they identified a normal right upper parathyroid gland. It was not removed at that time, um, likely because it probably looked pretty, pretty normal to the, to the surgeon. So it wasn't removed, uh, looked for a, a, a right lower gland, could not find one, and then went to the left side. Um, stated that uh, there were two normal glands on the left. Uh, they also uh, were not biopsied, so we don't have any confirmation of that. So we went back to the right side, and this was an extensive operation. It lasted about three hours total. Um, after looking at both sides, went back to the right and removed the first gland that he had found, the only gland I think that the, that the surgeon found, the right upper gland. Um, reviewing the pathology report, this gland uh, weighed only five milligrams, which is pretty tiny. So it's pretty clear that this was a normal gland. Um, after that operation, uh, the patient was told that they um, were cured and that the, their abnormal parathyroid gland had been found, etc. Unfortunately, the lab values were identical after surgery as they were before surgery, which based on review of the PATH report and some of the details of the op report is not, not surprising. So the patient was not cured, continued to have calcium levels close to 12 and very high pTH values. Um, she found our center uh, after doing some research herself and uh, presented to us, um, when did she come here? About a year later, October of 2023. Um, we did our routine imaging with her, and I'm going to review that with you now. Uh, what you're looking at now is a standard uh, Sestamibi scan. It's a nuclear medicine x-ray that's pretty typical um, to be done uh, before surgery for hyperparathyroidism. And I'll point some things out here to you. Um, as you can see, there isn't a lot of anatomy that you see on these, these nuclear medicine scans. You're really just sort of seeing shades of gray that you're interpreting. And a couple of things that you'll see, you see some dark spots here and I'll point them out to you. Uh, down here, the heart is what you see. Uh, you're just seeing the top of the liver. These organs take up the tracer that we give these patients. This is kind of the area of interest. This is the thyroid that you're seeing here, this butterfly shaped uh, area of uptake. These dark spots up here are just salivary gland tissue. Salivary glands take this tracer up as well. Uh, this is just a bit of an artifact. You can see the injection site you know, from the left arm um, coming in here. That's all that this line is. So when we look at this um, image, we're looking for areas of, of focal increased uptake, uh, usually in this area, but we also look really everywhere because parathyroids can be located from the level of the heart down here all the way up to the base of the skull up here. So we're really looking everywhere, but this is the main area that we're looking. And on this early image, um, we don't really see anything, or at least I, I don't see any areas of increased uptake here in the thyroid region. Uh, this is the same view straight on, and it, th this is a delayed image. And the reason we do a bit of a delay is that often the tracer will wash out of the thyroid earlier than parathyroid tissue. And you're hoping to see a, a more, more easily seen focus of uptake, suggesting a parathyroid uh, tumor. 
But when you look here, the thyroid looks pretty uniform. Uh, there really is no area of uptake that's interesting. So I would call this a non-localizing or negative parathyroid scan. This wasn't that helpful for us. Okay, so here's some representative um, uh, pictures from her ultrasound exam that I did before surgery. Um, this is a reoperative case, as you know, and um, we, we're not as excited about going back into to these operations completely blindly, meaning without any real idea of which, which gland we're going after. Uh, they're technically a lot more difficult, and so we prefer to have a, at least a pretty good idea of what the problem is so that we can, you know, we can maximize our chances of being successful. Um, so the, the scan that we did being negative was disappointing, um, and so we were hoping this ultrasound would help us out, and it turns out that it did. What you're looking at here is the right thyroid lobe. These are transverse images of the neck at the level of the thyroid. You're seeing here just the right side of the trachea. This is the right thyroid lobe and cross-section. This dark spot here is the carotid artery. This is typical anatomy you see on a thyroid ultrasound. I'm going to switch. So that's what a nor this is normal looking thyroid parenchyma here. Very uniform as you can see. And before I switch to the next picture, I'll just say that parathyroid tumors look dark like this, like this does. That's, we call it hypoechoic, like the carotid artery looks dark on ultrasound. That's what parathyroid tumors look like. So that's what we're looking for. And on this next image, you're going to see we've moved a little lower. This is closer to the lower part of the thyroid. And here at the lateral part of it, you see this hypoechoic or dark mass. It's right next to the carotid. They look pretty similar. This is very suspicious for a parathyroid adenoma that's inside the thyroid, which can happen. Uh, I'm going to show you a transverse view of this thyroid, and you can see this mass again. This is now the thyroid on its side. This is the very bottom tip of it, and here is this very well circumscribed mass inside the thyroid. This is very sort of typical in appearance for an intrathyroidal parathyroid tumor. Okay. Okay, so uh, we were pretty excited about that ultrasound finding, as I said. Uh, based on those findings, we were uh, confident, or I was confident that I could cure her disease, and we took her to the operating room. And uh, I should mention that, uh, unfortunately, a result of her first operation was that her right uh, vocal cord was permanently paralyzed. It's a risk of any neck surgery, but um, unfortunately, it, it, uh, it happened to her. And that has implications for what we do in subsequent surgeries. But operating on the same side as a vocal cord paralysis is pretty safe to do. You can't, uh, you can't make that worse, so to speak. So it was safe to do this operation. Um, and all we had to do was open up the capsule of the thyroid and just pluck that parathyroid tumor out. It was pretty straightforward, actually. And uh, she was cured. Uh, her PTH prior to surgery, we, we always check it before these reoperative cases, it measured 147. And after surgery, it came down to 5.6. And she was uh, incredibly happy. She had a number of symptoms um, that she was dealing with from the disease and um, they all resolved after surgery. So uh, this is another uh, good example of, of the importance, I would say, of um, having your parathyroid operation done by an experienced uh, surgeon. Um, intrathyroidal parathyroid tumors are not that uncommon. And if you don't perform ultrasound as a surgeon, meaning you know, you're know you doing it yourself, um, things like this are gonna be missed. You cannot feel or see these during the operation itself. So you really need to know that that's something that you're gonna encounter um, before you start the operation. And that's why uh, ultrasound is so important. You also have to know how to interpret those findings. If, if a radiologist does that ultrasound, for example, they'll, they'll, they'll call that a thyroid nodule. They won't be able to, to make the distinction. But um, I've seen so many of these that when I see one, I, I can really tell the difference between a parathyroid tumor in the thyroid and a thyroid nodule in most cases. So this was a great uh, uh, case. Uh, we were successful um, and she uh, was really satisfied by, by her trip here. So keep that in mind. Um, a, couple good, a couple important points. Try to find a surgeon who's experienced. Ask them if they do their own ultrasounds before surgery. Um, if they don't, then a case like this is, is probably going to end up being unsuccessful. So I think that's important. And if you've had a, a surgery um, that's been unsuccessful and don't really know what to do, haven't been given a plan or, or any options, consider contacting our center and I'd love to talk to you about it. And um, we most likely could get, you, could get you fixed. Until next time, thanks for spending some time with me. I hope this has helped and uh, have a great day.